Welcome to People Like You. In the heart of the city of Oakland is a small but mighty shelter that has served over 80,000 at-risk single women and women with children since 1982. We will meet some of the team at Aerial Outreach Missions as well as two women aided by this dedicated outreach. Stay with us. One lady was talking about the fact that she was abused as a child growing up and then after getting out of that environment, moved on to get married and was again abused by her spouse. My family did not want me. My children left. Um, no organization wanted me. They were afraid that I would die on them because I was beaten so badly. You know, we have a lot of ladies who are um, doing well now. They have uh, long-term housing, they're permanent housing, they're able to take care of their families. Welcome back. Dr. Carla Jackson, founder and CEO of Aerial Outreach Mission, joins us today. And I am so privileged to have you here. Thank you. How, um, how does the program aided 80,000 women in that short period of time? You are a small organization. <laughs> well, a lot of hard work and a lot of prayer. <laughs> and and uh, we have a lot of volunteers. We are a volunteer-based organization. Um, and so what we've um, managed to um, do is be able to help our clients get, gain housing, uh, permanent housing, uh, longer term housing if we can't get them into um, a permanent housing situation. And then um, we have some that are in waiting where the, as they come in as um, on our emergency for mm -hmm. emergency shelter or emergency transitional, which that would allow them to come in and stay for up to 21 days. And uh, we have been, you know, God has just blessed us to be successful in getting them placed within that time frame. Tell me why they are emergency situations. Uh, when we mention uh, the word emergency, we mean we're getting um, individuals coming in as, uh, let's say, coming out of a domestic violence type situation. Mm -hmm. um, we have some who are coming um, maybe from the hospital. They're being exited out of the hospital from to the streets if we don't bring them in. Mm. So, um, so do you feel responsibility? In a I do. I feel, I, feel, I feel responsible because I'm a woman myself and, um, you know, it, it just, um, you know, I feel for these clients. I, and I actually know what it's like to have to be, you know, going from one shelter to another shelter, from one house to another house and just hopping around. Why you know. is that? Uh, well, I had a fire in my home and never thought, you know, a stove fire would lead me to the, to the streets and, um, and, and from uh, the streets to the hotel. I have insurance on my home, but um, didn't get the support services that I needed from my insurance company. So um, it left us, you know, going from hotel to hotel wow. and um, staying with family members and friends and it can be very taxing. On and then, a, especially if somebody's in an abusive situation. Exactly. And so, you know, one thing, uh, I met you before today, yes. and I was excited to have you come. Mm -hmm. um, your program is recognized. Uh, there's so many notables um, have, um, in the political realm, mm -hmm. have um, uh, given commendation mm -hmm. or comments for your organization. And there are some high profile organizations that actually hire mm -hmm. from the, the women that you help. So I want to mm -hmm. talk about that as well in a minute. But your, your heart and tenacity, mm -hmm. if there is a woman mm -hmm. who needs help, what I've noticed about you mm -hmm. is you're going to see that they get help. Yes, ma'am. And that is why I think 80,000 women have been helped. Tell me about when they come to your program, mm -hmm. I'm sure they're greeted with love. Yes. But also, um, I'm going to guess that there are certain things that they have to do to be able to stay. Uh, yes, um, they do need to um, be able to meet the criteria because we uh, want people to understand that we are not a drug rehab facility, but we do have partnership with agencies that um, facilitate, you know, that work with the, the, our clients that have drug dependency issues. Do you find that there are a lot of individuals that come in with a drug problem? Uh, we do, um, and, and working with women, you know, assessing them over the phone before they come to our location. 
Uh, we do find that there are high, um, there's a, a high percentage of women who are on drugs. Okay, so you work mm -hmm. with them to get We them work on. with them to get into the place where they need to go because we, our, our desire is to make sure that everybody gets, w go wherever they need to go yes. in order to get the support services that they need. And if I'm not a drug uh, dependency issue facility, mm -hmm. why put them at my place? Right. I'm, we are the next step for individuals coming out of recovery. Mm -hmm. So if we have women who are trying to go to the next step and, and move on where they're now they've, you know, they've, they're uh, recovered from the drug tendency issues, now they can move into our location. Okay. And then we're able to take them on and um, help them to uh, build stronger life skills uh -huh. because it doesn't make sense for them to get a job, get money, and then they end up back in the same place because they don't know how to manage that money. And I think that's what you did for mm -hmm. Angela Curry. Yes, She was a mother of five. Mm -hmm. Yes. And she received an education, and she, as I recall, was a 4.0 honor student. Yes, she was. Uh, and you helped facilitate that for her. We actually uh, gave her the place to stay, make sure that her family was in, because they were actually going to be on the streets as well. And so we allowed her to come and stay with us in our uh, facility, and that gave her a stable setting so that she could go to school and be able to, um, you know, get her kids back in school and be able to um, finish out her career. And you also help individuals find work if you feel it's time for them to move into that uh, arena. Yes, ma'am. So who are some, what are some of the organizations that hire? We've had a lot of referrals to the um, Postal Service, the United States Postal Service. Uh, we've also had uh, the Walmart has been very supportive in this effort. We're working currently with the Macy's, uh, trying to get um, some of our women employed with them. Mm -hmm. And then we also um, have worked with Dollar Tree, uh, some of our fast food chains like McDonald's, different yes, ones that we yes. refer to. So uh, we're always networking, trying to see what we can do to uh, make sure that these ladies can get jobs and be able to start saving. All right. And some of these organizations um, have been working with you for some time. Uh, yes, we've been working with them. Uh -huh. So that also, what that indicates to me is that your program is successful. Yes, it's been su it's been successful. I, um, you know, we have a lot of ladies who are um, doing well now. They have uh, long-term housing. They're permanent housing. They're able to take care of their families. You know, uh, they're m managing their money so that they can keep their homes. You know, be self-sustained. So I think that this is, um, you know, we've been able to uh, serve you know, quite a few ladies and get them the support they need. And you're hoping to continue to do we this? We want to continue. Yes, so is this at, at the center of your heart? It is. All right. Well, you have brought some folks with you today, yes. which is exciting to me. In the next segment, we're going to meet one of the board members, and we're going to get that perspective. Mm -hmm. And then there are a couple individuals who are actually gainfully employed and out of the program now as a result of aerial mission outreach, correct? So yes, So we meet them later as well. So more with Dr. Carla Jackson and Kathy Dunlap will join us when we return, so don't go away. It was her sincerity that drew me in, and in addition to that, the fact that she doesn't get a salary and no one gets a salary, it's all volunteers, and she's been around for 35 years. I'm trying to find out how she does that. Welcome back. We're with Dr. Carla Jackson, founder and CEO of Aerial Outreach Mission, and Kathy Dunlap who serves on the Board of Directors. We appreciate you being here with us, Kathy. Thank you, it's a pleasure to be here. So, um, what stands out in your mind most about this program? Carla, she's done so much with so little. She's run this program on That's a shoestring. That's what stood out yes. to me as well. Yes. <laughs> she's run this program on a shoestring, and the shoestring is getting all worn out, but she's still being productive in the community, and it's what she believes, and it's her sincerity in terms of what she wants to give to the community and how she wants to help people. Well, and you're on the board of directors, um, but it isn't something necessarily I've learned that you actually sought out. <laughs> <laughs> no, I did not. Um, very briefly, eight years ago, I met Carla at the Combined Federal Campaign. That's what the federal employees uh, do, federal agencies do, and they bring in charities, and the charities get a chance to talk to the federal employees. Because you are actually, you work for the government. I worked for the government okay. at the time for 35 years. And we have tables all around in the Oakland Federal Building, and I go around and meet everyone and speak to people. And I spoke to Carla, and she told me about Aerial Outreach Mission. And uh, it was her sincerity that drew me in. And in addition to that, the fact that she doesn't get a salary and no one gets a salary, it's all volunteers. And she's been around for 35 years. I'm trying to find out how she does that. 
That is a long time, <laughs> and I agree with you. And then to also place so many individuals and have organizations like McDonald's and others hire over and over again, which means there are results. Exactly, exactly. Um, so I retired in January of this year, and I have a vision board, and on my vision board was to work with a charity. And uh, I didn't know, I had a few in mind, I narrowed it down to two, and I make my decisions based on Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not to your own understanding, and all your ways acknowledge Him and He will direct your path. He directed your he path. He directed me to Aerial Area. Outreach Mission and, and I'm Carla. Happy. I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> so how do women find out about this program? Those well, for me, it. the women find out through the Combined Federal can Campaign. It's an annual event, and um, the, the charities come and speak. And a lot of women, more women, I would think, than men show up. And they talk about the benefits that uh, they can offer the community. And then it's word of mouth. So I have reached out since I'm retired, and Carla asked me to be on the board of directors to the women that I know to tell them about what Aerial Outreach mm -hmm. does and the benefits and how they su serve and support the community. It's a network. It's yeah. word of mouth. Okay. So then um, you provide, Carla, let's speak to this for a minute. You provide um, free services that include life skills, yes. counseling, case management. Mm -hmm. So you actually, um, once people are past the addiction, they want to move out into society you help equip them, your organization? Yes, once they've completed a drug rehab program, then they're able to come into our program, which is the next step, and then we're able to work with them to um, develop. And if they have the children, their children can come yes. with them? Yes, ma'am. How many women can you help at one time? We can m help 14, excuse me, 14 ladies, yes, 14 ladies, and then women with small kids that can sleep with the mom. Um, because we, we found out that most children, you know, if they're five and under, mm -hmm. or if they're, you know, between around six, they don't want to sleep in a bed to themselves. They want to sleep with mommy. All right. So <laughs> and, and you actually also provide programming then for parenting and anger issues, which sometimes yes. accompany a situation like this. Yes, ma'am. So mm -hmm. you really try to meet every need yes, they have. Yes, ma'am. And then I'm also, I'm also a licensed daycare provider as well, so I do a lot of parenting uh, support services with my clients. So, Kathy, can you, is there a story that you can um, just kind of impart to us of an individual that's been through the program? Well, at their annual luncheon, um, the women are, and the men give testimonies as to what, uh, how Ariel has helped them. And one lady was talking about the fact that she was abused as a child growing up, and then after getting out of that environment, moved on to get married and was, again, abused by her spouse, physically, abusively, mm. you know, just torn apart in their, in their spirit, of course. you know, physically, and it touched me. And I think that may have been one of the first or second luncheons that I've gone to, and I thought, if this woman can survive wow. by the support and help of aerial outreach, there's something that I can do to help, too. So I've carried that with me, that story, and that's, it, there's more to the story, mm -hmm. uh, but I've carried that part of it, that you go from a father abusing you to a spouse abusing you, and you survive. Yeah. And you get a job. I think she was a nurse or is a nurse. And so she has a career. Yeah. She didn't give up. She kept going. Right. And to my knowledge, right. she's still going. Yeah. Right. You know, and that, that's a motivator to me. What, does a woman, what is she feeling when she comes into a program like this? What are some of the psychological issues she's dealing with? Uh, of course, we're dealing with fear. Um, you're dealing with um, the uh, depression. Depression. Insecurity. Um, you know, trust issues, you know, um, trust issue. So um, there, there are a lot of things. Unworthiness. Yes, feeling, you know, unworthy, um, you know, um, let down, you know, because it's your, it, and it's, sometimes it's not just the, 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 the father, the, um, the, the husband the, or the spouse, it's the family. Sometimes your family's turning their backs on you. And, um, you know, and that's blame, you know, so you're dealing, you know, they feel like they're being blamed for the things that have transpired. Okay. Mm -hmm. And most of the women you serve, are they from the city of Oakland or are they from Alameda County? Uh, and they, you get referrals or they walk in off the street? Um, from the Bay Area, general Bay Area. So they're coming from all over. Okay. Mm -hmm. What do you hope to achieve in the next five years? Well, I would like to, um, of course, be able to uh, have our, our larger facility to be able to, um, you know, house our clients uh, and work with them 
have a stronger staff, mm -hmm. um, a really strong board that believe in what we're doing and, and, and have the ability to yeah. help us push you know, the um, agency up to the next level. And then I also would like to, um, I, I'd like to do something that we've not been able to do and that's be able to have salaries yes. for our staff yes. members, the immediate staff. Um, that worked so hard to help us all of these years. Okay, so when we come back, we, I think we actually uh, have the opportunity to meet the young lady that you spoke about a little mm -hmm. bit ago and then another young lady who's been through the program. So more with Dr. Carla Jackson when we return. Women who are, have victims of domestic violence, we suffer with a fight or flight syndrome. For me, we're from the age of seven. That's so how I came into Ariel. I was 49 years old. I feel like I need um, something straight and narrow, mm -hmm. and that's what I like about Ariel, the spiritual aspect of it. Elnoria Brown and Desiree Peterson join us. So ladies, I really thank you for being here today. Thank, thank you so much. And Elnoria, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start with you. The testimony we heard in the last segment. Yes. That was about you, wasn't it? Yes. So you used some words um, offset just a second ago of things that you dealt with. Do you mind using those again here? I was raped at the age of seven by my father and by other males within my household. My dad almost tried to kill me and he marked me and told me that with this, I'm not going to say how it was done, but it was done as a reason to every time I looked at in the mirror, I would know I would never be anything, no matter how long I lived. His exact words were, every time you see this scar, you know you will never be nothing as long as you live, no matter how hard you try. This is your father? Yes. Right. And then you left that relationship and entered into a marriage and you were further abused. Yes. So you also told me a few moments ago offset that you were very grateful that Ariel Outreach Mission is here. Why is that? Women who are, have victims of domestic violence, we suffer with a fight or flight syndrome no matter however long. For me, we're from the age of seven. That's how I came into Ariel, I was 49 years old. Wow. Being misdiagnosed with things as drug-seeking behavior because there was a great deal of pain. Mm -hmm. No one wanted me. My family did not want me. My children left. Um, no organization wanted me. They were afraid that I would die on them because I was beaten so badly. And I lost most of my memory. I was having seizures and a lot of other physical challenges. Aerial Outreach Mission was the only person who wanted me. And for someone who suffered through a lot, and for someone to take me and give me a chance, that first night was the first time I slept wow. in a long time where I wasn't afraid of oh. being killed or battered or whatever. March 1st, 2006 was the first day of the rest of my life where I came into Aerial Outreach Mission. All right. And not only that, they gave me a hug, which I can't even remember the last time I had a hug. Oh. And that let me know that someone loved me hmm. and they never judged me. And I want to return to your story in a minute. Thank you for sharing that. I know that you went deep for that, and I really appreciate it. And Desiree, what's your reason for being here today? I'm here because I came to Ariel in 2004, and I had a one-year-old, and I was in a situation where I was with a friend, and they decided they wanted to go back home, and I was left in the hotel. It was the last day, and I didn't have any money. And a friend told me she knew some place where I could go and that where me and my son could go. And she would tell me about it later. And that was, I met Miss um, Carla, Miss Scott, 
that day and I my son was one and I've been with Ariel still associated with them my son is now 14 <laughs> wow and we have never that's the only place I felt comfortable because of the rules I like the rules that she have I feel like I need um, some straight and narrow mm -hmm. and that's what I like about Ariel the spiritual aspect of it that keeps me grounded yes. and like Miss Elnoria just said they never make you feel inferior to them mm -hmm. they never make you feel like we're up here and you're down yeah. there so both of you went through the program yes. and then you have stayed to give back Yes. And the program has been um, in existence 35 years, mm -hmm. all on volunteer help. Yeah. So That's you nice. are volunteers helping other women yes. coming through the program. Mm -hmm. And so, El Noria, you give a hug now to someone who comes in, I'm guessing. All the time. Yeah. All right. You're also involved, El Noria, in placing individuals. Is, am, am I correct in saying that Goodwill also hires from this outreach? They find organizations that need people, mm -hmm. and then I have a li liaison, we work together, and we match what's needed with what people would like to do and have the skills, yes. and they have hired a lot of our clients. Right. Um, even yeah, the... 80,000 women so far, and, and counting. The county, Alameda County. Hires. I, we're talking five figure, six figure jobs that get hired into. Wow, as a result of being through. Well, I'm actually sorry that we are through with the program. I would love to continue talking with you both. Um, but what I want to say is thank you for being here. And Elnoria, you are an RN, I understand, and you have devoted your career to helping here. And that is your legacy. Your yes. legacy is all the people that you are helping. And you are something. You're a child of God, and He's using you mightily. And I thank you all for being here. Carla, thank you thank for the you. program. And thank you for having us. us. For more information about Aerial Outreach Mission, or to get in touch with Dr. Carla Jackson, visit aerialom.org or ktln.tv. And remember that KTLN is a donor-supported ministry, and programs like this one are made possible through your support. Thanks for being with us, and join us again next week.